Ever since I was a little kid, whenever I got excited about something, I'd clench my fists. The Amec Mastering Compressor. Hi, welcome to the Crates Motel. My name's Conan. In today's video, we're going to be looking at Plugin Alliance's new Amec Mastering Compressor. Now, I've been using the Amec EQs on my masters since their release, and I absolutely love them. But this time, it's a compressor. Let's jump in. So here we are in Studio One. Now, if you quickly look over the controls, you will see straight away it's not your usual compressor setup. You don't have the usual attack and release. It's not exactly the usual ratio. You have your threshold, etc. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna run through it very quickly because I think that a better way of showing you how these controls work is running a signal through it, running a pre-master through it, and compressing it the way that I would compress it if I was doing the actual master for a client. We'll start off just quickly down below just to go through these quickly because these are pretty standard controls that Plugin Alliance have on their plugins now, the Mono Maker, Stereo Width, TMT, etc. Nothing much different from there. The VCA clip is kind of like the THD on the other plugins that they do. Here we have a sidechain filter mode. This is a little bit different than your usual sidechain filter mode in that Firstly, you have your usual high pass, and this is the way that we would normally use a sidechain filter on a compressor. We would bring this up to basically stop the low end affecting the compressor, so you don't get that pumpy kind of feeling. You know, and it, it can be anywhere sort of 80 hertz upwards if you don't want the low end to affect it. But what we also have here is the ability to have a shelf or a curve, sorry, a bell curve, um, where we can isolate certain frequencies in the spectrum. Where we would use that, for instance, would be if we wanted to maybe DS some hi-hats, we wanted to focus in on those, you know, up in this kind of area, uh, or if we wanted to focus on some vocals kind of down here. And you would, we would do that so, let's say for instance, the pre-master we were sent, we, we, we can't remix it because we don't have the parts, we don't have the stems, we've just got a stereo pre-master. The vocals might be a little bit high in the mix. It's not possible to get it remixed. So we need to do some surgery ourselves. So in using uh, this sidechain filter, we can control how the compressor reacts to certain frequencies in, in the frequency spectrum. So we would be able to bring the vocals forward in the mix, or we'd be able to just compress the vocals or, or DS, et cetera, et cetera. So it's really, really useful. And I'll show you how this auto and this latch works uh, in a moment. For future reference, uh, holding down control on a PC and clicking takes you back to the default settings. So let's run a track through it. And I'm basically gonna just kind of show you how I would use it, for instance, on this particular master. Uh, I think it's a better way. Do please read the manual though, so you get more of an idea of what these exactly do. But if I went into detail on them now, you'd probably fall asleep and it would probably just sound like a load of, you know, nerdy terms. I think it's just one of those things that is better demonstrated by actually playing some music through it. So this is a pre-master that I had, uh, was sent from a client. Nice club track. You can see down here the detector, basically the colors, the green, the yellow and the red correspond to these knobs here. The ambience is kind of like a delta. It, it plays you what has been compressed as such. It's similar to the ambience on the Amec channel strip. So down below, we'll just quickly run through how the sidechain filter works. With auto on, when you click on the knobs and you move them, it will isolate the sidechain filter so you can listen to how you're affecting the sidechain filter. So I'll show you there. So it's useful to be able to get an idea of where you want to cut off the bass so that it doesn't affect the compression or where you want to focus in. Let's just take that off for a second and you want it to focus in, make sure that's in bell. So I'm kind of focusing in on where the vocals are there and I would be able to affect how the compressor reacts to that kind of area in the frequency spectrum. And if I wanted to DS, I 
get an impression like that. Now with latch, it stays on permanently whilst you adjust the, adjust the side chain filter. So you don't have to hold down the knobs basically. So it's a, it's a good way to just dial, it, dial in how you want the side chain filter to affect the compression. So let's just take that back to zero, put that on auto. So let's, let's play around with the fresh hold and to give you a basic idea, obviously we have the ratio here. I'm gonna take it around to sort of right about here. And with the timing that affects the, the speed of the compressor, I guess, the attack and the release in a kind of combined way. And then you can affect the transients and the envelope of the, how the compressor works using the fast and the peak, and it will correspond here in the detectors. Uh, see, already it's becoming a bit confusing with me trying to explain how it works, but when, when I actually start moving the controls, you'll be able to hear how the transients are affected. And uh, ultimately, my goal with this pre-master um, with the compressor would have been to tighten up the low end. Well, now obviously with club music, house music, hip hop, that kind of stuff, you you want to be a you don't want the low ends to be overwhelming in the subs, so that in a on a big system it's just flapping around and it and it it doesn't sound great. So what you want to do is you want to keep the low end in the master, but you want to be able, you want to tighten it up basically. You want to control it, and then in controlling it, you might make you, for instance you might put an EQ afterwards just to just to bring back a bit of a bit of EQ, and, it, and it's. In this, that's you know that's what mastering is 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 about when you're using a compressor in this way is is about gaining control of the pre-master in perhaps a situation where you can't send it back to the sound engineer and the original production team to to remix it. You have to do a bit of surgery, or you you know you have to um, just gain control over it. So then you can mould it how you want it to sound to get the absolute best out of that pre-master for the client. So you can hear with this ratio setting, like I said, it has like an auto gain feature almost. So as I'm bringing the threshold up and it starts compressing, it's also bringing the perceived level up, I guess would be the best way to describe it. And also you can see how the gain's going up and how the gain reduction is affecting the overall uh, signal. Now I'm just going to bring this back just a tiny amount because I want to give you a more accurate level change so that you're not fooled. Now, what, so what I'm going to do with these controls, obviously I'm going to push them a little bit further than I would in, on a proper master, a proper finished master, because I want to be able to show you what the effect does. But listen to what's happening with the, the sub bass around the kick drum. Firstly, listen to how the transients are affected on the kick drum and how they're brought forward in the mix and tightened up and, and there's almost a bit more of a click to them. And how the like kind of sound of the sub bass is, is tightened up around the kick drum. So they're working together rather than clashing with each other and, and that's, that, that's what I wanted to do on this particular master. So with this you can now see where the red is coming up on the detector and it's bringing the transient out a little bit or it's sharpening things up. It's almost working like uh, an EQ. Uh, if you're familiar with Eventide Split EQ plugin, this is kind of what that does, where it, it grabs hold of a certain part of the frequency spectrum. Like you might want to grab the low end, and you can not only can uh, can you EQ it, you can affect the way the transients sound in, in sort of almost in a dynamic way. So what this is almost doing, rather than being a compressor, is it's almost being a dynamic EQ, all working in the same way that maybe a multiband compressor would work. So in mastering, it's it, it, ultimately being able to control frequency areas, the low end, the low mids, the high mids, etc. It, it's 
it's really beneficial to be able to have that kind of control um, when you're at the mastering stage because you don't have the separate stems if you just if you only have a pre-master stereo pre-master and you don't have the separate tracks as if you're a sound engineer um, so certainly whilst i've only been using this compressor for about a week what i have been using it for is controlling the low end a lot of the time haven't really used it very much for kind of mid-range compression or for DSing or anything i already have some some plugins that i use for that but i, I will in future use that I use this particular plugin to try that out as well, but you know I, I'm I'm learning it. I, I like to really get to know a plugin well before I use it on finished masters for clients. So at the moment, this hasn't really been used on any finished masters because I'm still getting to grips with it, and you know I want to be a black belt on something before I start using it on finished masters. But certainly, what it's been used for most so far is tightening up the low end, and I think it does that really, really well. I mean, it, it, it's 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 almost it's almost like a dynamic EQ push it a little bit further listen to the kick drum and listen to the sub bass let's give it a bit of width So obviously I would spend a lot more time on this if it was if it was an actual master that I was going to finish off and send to a client. But very quickly, I've been able to control the low end, bring the transients out a little bit in the mix, bring the, the kick drum a bit forward. The, the width on this is, is really, really nice. I, I probably wouldn't go further than about 105% on it, but you start getting not weird phasing issues, but it just starts sounding a bit too, too much to me. But that's personal taste. And then obviously, you know, the mono make is very, very uh, useful. If you're using the width, watch when you use the width, use this correlation meter that you have here. It can really help you in, you know, if, if, it's, if it's doing too much, but you want the width, use the mono maker, you know, you, you combine them together. That's why they're in the same section. I'm sure that's why Plugin and Lights put them in the same section because they can work together to give you a nice wide open master, but at the same time, keep the bass you know, isolated in the center of the mix, you know, where, where it sounds best. Not all the time, but most of the time. So there you have it, a very quick demonstration of the Amic Mastering Compressor. There's so much to it. You know, you really need to learn this one. You need to read the manual. Uh, I got very, very excited very, very quickly when I saw that, um, Plugin Alliance were releasing the mastering compressor with Amic on it. And straight away, I've got to be honest with you, straight away, I put it on a master and I looked at it and I thought, where's attack, where's release? Uh, 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 uh. And, you know, it, it's, it does take some learning. It's a bit of a beast. Um, but once you learn it, once you learn the peak uh, and the timing and, and you know, how those affect the envelope, the attack, the release... Um, how you can tighten up the low end very, very quickly. It does very quickly become one of those compressors that you kind of go all gooey over. Uh, and and I and I have, uh, uh, you know, I, I'm sorry, but Plugin Alliance have done it again with the Amec Mastering Compressor. It, it I can see it very quickly becoming the compressor that I use in my mastering chain. And you know, I, I think I, I think I touched on this earlier on in the video. I'm not a big compressor when it comes to mastering you know it's not the first uh thing that i reach for on my mastering chain you know but i do use compression sometimes i do have a particular compressor that i tend to use in my chain when i master but i can see this amic very quickly not replacing it but i can see myself a and being between these two compressors and ultimately it's how it sounds it's what it can do to my masters and what i love about the amic mastering compressor is how very quickly you can control bass now i master a lot of club music um be it hip-hop uh, or be it house music there's a lot of bass 
on a lot of the masters that, that a lot of the pre-masters that I get sent. And a lot of my work in mastering is is taming the low end, but not losing the low end because people want the low end. You know, I, I, it's not my job to get rid of that low end. I, I need the low end there. But what I need to do is tighten things up. And, you know, a, a good multiband compressor will help me do that. But uh, this Amic compressor is, is giving me... Uh, it's it's enabling me is enabling me to do what I do with a multiband compressor, but multiband compressors can go wrong very very quickly, so you have to be very careful with them. This Amic compressor is giving me the ability to reel in the low end, but still but not lose the low end, tighten things up, and that is what I need to do on a lot of masters for a lot of my clients because you know that's club music. You need the beefy low end, but you don't want the subs flapping all over the place because it just takes over everything. And, and you know, so you need that tightness. So it's a yes from me. I would definitely be using this on masters. So thanks for watching. Please subscribe for more mixing and mastering tutorials and reviews. This is the Crates Motel. My name's Conan. Till next time.